Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the lab session 10. Uh, so this lab is going to be about procedures and stacks and this will prove to be important topics in perspective of your understanding and as well as your uh, kind of problems which can be asked. So let's get started. So what are procedures? So as we see procedure is a part of a code that can be called from your program in order to make some specific task. So having a modular approach in coding is always beneficial and advantageous. So procedures make program more structured and easier to understand. Generally procedure returns to the same point from where it was called. So the syntax for the procedure is that you give that you there is a keyword proc give a name to the procedure and then you end it with the same name which you have kept here and an end proc and before that you just write this keyword return here all right so name is the procedure name the same name should be used for both the proc and end proc directives and uh, these are just compiler directives so they are not assembled into any real machine code the compiler just remembers the address of the procedure so it is important point to understand in terms of your understanding The call instruction is used to so, um, how to put how like if you have a proc here how to go to that proc so for that we have this call instruction here all right so the call instruction used to call a procedure the uh, return instruction is used to return to the operating system and uh, the same instruction is used to return from a procedure so let's look take a look at this example here it's a very simple example and you can find this in the uh, in the github so here uh, nothing is going into the data section at the starting what we're doing is just calling the m1 function uh, the m1 procedure and in the m1 procedure we're moving the value 5h into the bx register so after executing this move operations what we'll expect is that ex will be having 2h and bx will be having 5h so let's see the execution of this quickly Here I have the week 10 code. So here you can see that, uh, all right, so I'll just quickly save it. Nothing much to explain in here. I'll just execute it and show it to you. So mlv10c1.esm. So now I'll run this debug x v10 c1.com so let's see the unassembled instructions so here it is making a call to the memory address 107 where these instructions are stored all right so it's something like it's good for you to uh, just you know understand from a perspective that the commands themselves versus the like what commands we are actually typing and what the compiler directives are. So there is a difference between the two, right? So here it is just making a call to 107, which is the statement which you can see here that the move BX instruction. And after that, the return instruction is there, which will uh, do the reverse of, which will send it back to this move AX comma 2H. So let's execute this and see. So the first time we execute, it has already made the call instruction and it has moved. So notice the instruction point error is 107, which is pointing to the next instruction. Now it has called return and uh, instruction pointer is right now 010A, but after the execution, it is again shifted back to 103. So keep all these small things in um, your, like, you know, just notice all these small things. It proves to be useful later on while answering questions. All right, then we have the move operation and simply we see after executing these operations, um, both these memory locations, locations are filled. So just like in any high level programming language, which you uh, see like Python or C, just like we have procedures, there's similar thing which we have here. And uh, let's proceed forward and see one more example. Okay, so here are the all the instructions which we have executed and the sequence in which they're getting executed right so you can see that move bx is getting executed first and then this is executing 
so passing parameters to procedures now this is where um, you know it will become interesting because there are multiple ways to do that so one of the ways there are several ways to pass parameters to a procedure and the easiest way to pass parameters is by using registers here is another example of a procedure that receives two parameters in EL and BL registers, multiplies these parameters, and turns the result in EX register. Since M2 is called four times, so let's look at the code here. So here you can see that, let me switch to red ink, right? So move EL, uh, we are moving this EL in decimal, it's written in decimal, but it's the same value in hexadecimal as well, it won't make a difference. And uh, now what we're doing is we're calling M2 four times. And what is the M2 procedure? So every time we call an M2 procedure, it executes this instruction. So M mul uh, BL. So this multiply uh, instruction BL, you know that it is the product of AL comma BL and is stored back in AX. So, uh, and this is, uh, this is the procedure and here we are returning. So we're calling it four times. So at the end here, we should expect, uh, 2h getting multiplied four times that would be uh, 16. So if two is multiplied four times, it would be 16 in decimal, which would be one zero in your hexadecimal. So just, you know, you have to be careful uh, in this while interpreting the result. So let's execute this one then, uh, once and see it quickly. So feel free to actually tweak around with these examples. The more you play with that, the more you will be comfortable in programming something new. Okay, so I've saved this and let me go to the DOS box. MLV10C2.ASM Debug X. So here we see that uh, the instructions, you can correlate all of them, move AL, BL, 2. And uh, here you can also see the operation, um, call getting, so call 0, 1, uh, 1, 1. So if you go to this memory location, you'll see that there is an instruction, multiply BL, and then there is a return instruction, right? So we'll discuss that what return instruction actually does. Maybe it has been discussed in the classes, but we'll have a quick look at what the return instruction does. So let's execute this for now. Um, the first instruction is move L. So let's execute this one by one. And after the first call statement, it will execute the mul operation once. So the result will now be stored in the AX register. And the first time it multiplies, it is the result two. Then again, you call this and it multiplies. So the here it comes four. the next time it would be eight and next time it would be 10, right? So these sorts of programs should give you a hint at doing repetitive operations and maybe calculating something like a factorial, which is uh, might be one of the problems in your lab assignments. So these operations will prove to be useful and combining it with the initial operations which we learned so you can calculate factorial with a very less you know in a very structured manner so do not forget your concepts which you have learned in data structures and algorithms they are going to be really important once we are uh, solving numerical so solving elp problems in up course so coming back to the uh, slides Now we come to the concept of stacks. So the stack is an area of memory for keeping temporary data. The stack is used by the call instruction to keep return addresses for procedure. Now call inherently uses stack that is like, you know, obvious, but stacks in themselves are very important data structures. So we'll see uh, what all operations can stack be, be. So stacks, as I can see the list that uh, stacks the basic algorithms which you can uh, implement efficiently using the stack data structure includes parenthesis matching and infix to postfix conversion, evaluation of postfix expression, reversal of a string, 
and depth first search depth first search is a graph traversal algorithm which is very useful and can be implemented easily using a stack the algorithm starts with the node and pushes it onto the stack it then pops out of that uh, of the, out the top element from the stack visits its, its neighbors and pushes them onto the stack again so like depth first search is a very important problem when it comes to uh, stack and there are few other interesting problems in general like solving the tower of hanoi or finding the largest rectangle in the histogram next greater element which will be the next greater element in stack in an array and uh, then we have reverse polish notation so all these uh, problems are there which can be solved using stack and it's better that you just revise these algorithms and in in order to learn how to implement them using stacks in MUP. So um, now let's continue forward with our readings. So this all uh, this also happens when interrupt is raised. So int instruction calls an interrupt. Uh, so these are the two interrupts which we had seen 21H and 10H. It stores the code segment and offset in the stack flag register. Similar to return, the I return instruction is used to return from an interrupt call. All right. So the push and pop instruction. So these, this is how you interact with the stacks which are inherently available to the, to the microprocessor. So stack is a LIFO data structure. That means last and first out and can be accessed to store or retrieve data using these two instructions, push and pop. So the way push works is that it stores a 16-bit value. So that's very important to know that it's not a DB, but a DW, okay? From a register or memory location into the stack. From a register or memory location. So directly you can push the memory location as well. Okay, so if you are using something, let's say push a register. So you can do an operation like push AX. If you're pushing some segment value, then you can do push DS. If you're pushing memory, then you can directly use the operation like push BX. So that would uh, store the memory, the content which is stored at this memory location into the stack, right? And then you can obviously push immediate data also into the stack. It's the same way you push, uh, you can do pop and you can directly pop whatever is the last available value in the stack, you can directly pop it into one of the registers or into the uh, segments or directly to a memory location as well. Okay, so let's uh, look at a follow along example in this case. Uh, it's a very simple example just to show you the syntax, but using keeping this example in mind, you can build on more interesting applications on top of that. So the following example shows how the stack can be used to swap the values in the registers CX and PX. You just have to notice the order of registers in the pop operation. All right, so it's a very simple go ahead and uh, you know, just uh, let's, let's directly execute this. Let's see this in action. So one thing to notice here is that this uh, data which is given, let's, let's change this to one, two, three, four. This will make us this will help us easier to visualize, understand where, how the memory is getting stored, how this date number is getting stored into the memory. All right. So I've saved this. Let me go to the DOS box. Q. ML. Sorry, ML V 10 C 3 dot ASM. Now let's execute this debug X. So here just uh, to inform you that I'm using the model small in order to have access to all the stack pointers separately. So it's best to use model small when we are dealing with stacks. 10 and because of that, we have a dot exe appearing here. No need to go into the unnecessary details of this. It's just for the practical purposes, we are doing that, all right? So because we're using model small, so you're seeing that many uh, of these extra operations are now coming here, like uh, before our actual code starts to execute. This is just to initialize. So you see that the first instructions move AX, one, two, three, four in our case. So up till this point, 
all this is used to initialize the stack segment, the stack pointers and everything. Okay. So let's execute this. Um, let's reach to the first of all, the point where our code starts to execute, which is 0017. 0017. All right. So as of now, um, um, one thing which we can notice is that the stack segments, the, if you want to access the stack right now, like how does the stack look like? So the stack segment colon the stack pointer. So if I do D stack segment colon stack pointer, it would point me to the memory location where uh, the stack is right now. And I don't see anything. And you know that stack grows upwards, like uh, the uh, memory decreases as the stack grows. Okay. So let's execute the next operation, which is move AX comma one, two, three, four. So in AX one two three four has come in BX three four three four is there and now we'll push the AX. So once we push the AX, at which memory location do we expect this to go? Uh, the location pointed by stack segment colon stack pointer. Okay. So eight seventy five colon FFD zero. So let's do this and let's take a look at the uh, memory location now stack segment colon stack pointer so one thing which you have noticed that the value of stack pointer has decreased and um, the value one two three four is stored in the indian uh, little indian format that means the lower uh, bytes go to the lower memory location all right so just be careful of this operation again here that how the memory is getting stored you might be getting some question in this, which um, for you to answer on this. Now let's execute the next operation, which was push BX. Uh, and again, let's uh, take a look at the memory location. So now 3434 has come, um, which means BX also is pushed. So 16 bits are pushed here. Finally, we'll do the pop operation. And uh, first we are doing a pop to AX. So whatever this value 3434 will now go to the AX. So AX gets 3434 and then BX would get 1234. Okay, so it's that simple to implement stacks here and all these algorithms which involve stack try and get some um, understanding of that. J through your DSA course, which you've done like basic computer algorithms. Okay, and um, that is it from this lab session. So it's a small one, but at the same time, I've hinted you a few things on how you can make this more, um, more, more learning experience by revising your concepts. I won't go into the details of algorithms here that uh, I'm assuming you might be knowing. In fact, you should be knowing because you've done that course. So nothing can be done on that side. But it's best to revise the few of the basic algorithms before you come for the exams or anything. All right. So uh, thank you for your time.